On this channel, cops are heroes. But more often than not, the chiefs are not heroes. They're usually in it with the reporters to ignore, deny, condone, excuse, encourage, and even lie about black mob violence, black on white crime, black criminality that is ruining so many lives all over the country. Now, I'm not saying the new chief of police in Detroit is an angel or perfect, but he's been in there two years now. You remember, he's the guy that when he first got the job, before he got the job, like all chiefs of police, not, def not sheriffs, chiefs of police, they're basically gun grabbers. He gets to Detroit, he's there a couple weeks, and he goes, hey, people of Detroit, we can't protect you, get a gun. In the next six months, there were all sorts of uh, people who were shot and killed trying to break into people's houses. The crime rate in Detroit started to plummet. Now, the same chief has a new idea. Let's put cameras, real cameras, not these fake cameras that you and I see on this channel all the time, not these fake cameras that are really blurred and everything. No, we were going to be serious and put real cameras, taking real pictures we can use to figure out who the hell is, is ruining our city with crime, mayhem, and chaos. That's what he did. That's what this video is, but it has a couple of other twists and turns in it. Listen to this. We begin with police making an arrest in connection with a bold gas station shooting caught on surveillance video. Yeah, everybody's talking mm -hmm. about this one. Fox News reportage has the latest details in the case. Good morning, Ruth. <laughs> Yeah, good morning to you. You know, they call it Project Green Light, and it is something that they are very, very happy about behind us at Detroit Police for a couple of reasons. One, yeah, the first point in this case is the fact that the person who was shot at is expected to be all right. But secondly, the person who was behind all of this, the, the, the gun woman in this case, she was caught, all thanks to surveillance cameras that were crystal clear. It wasn't just video we saw, but crystal clear video of the suspect who shot at a driver inside of this Grand Prix at 4 a.m. Sunday at this mobile gas station on the 15,000 block of Fenkel. It might as well be a social media profile picture, it's so clear. The high-definition camera was streaming directly to the Detroit Police Department as part of the project Green Light. And within two hours of getting it to you, we had suspect in custody. Now, I got to give, certainly acknowledge the great work by a real-time crime center who really went through uh, and analyzed this piece for us, but got it over to the 8th Precinct uh, and quickly had her in custody within two hours. Somebody recognized the woman and called police. She was arrested while driving about a mile away from her home. The high-def cameras are sitting at 11 businesses throughout Detroit, and the list is growing. A BP, Sitco, Marathon, a McDonald's, four mobile gas stations, two liquor stores, and a Sunoco, all armed with the cameras. There should be one clear message. Criminals don't do it in Detroit. You never know who's watching, and we have the capability now of getting that information out in real time. You know, we can talk about story after story about how quickly we're making arrests now as compared to before. So what's the message? Don't do it in Detroit, not here, not anymore. The program started in January. It cost just over $5,000 for businesses to equip themselves with the cameras. People using gas stations to fuel up, fed up with them turning into shooting ranges for people who have beefs with others. Police vowing to make these areas safer. Officers responding now have vehicle description, suspect description, plate number, and even if the suspects leave, uh, there's an opportunity for a rapid follow-up. Now, I should tell you that these gas stations are not keeping it secret at all that they are involved with this Project Green Light. In fact, when you go to the gas stations, any one of those that you saw on the screen just earlier in that story, you'll know that they'll actually have those cameras there because they have big, bright signs pointing to the fact that they have those surveillance items there. Much like you would put a, this home is secured by such and such alarm system outside of your home. It's a very clear sign, a very clear message to criminals to take your business elsewhere. By the way, more businesses are expected to sign up for this. In the meantime, as for the victim involved in this, the person who was shot at inside of that car, inside of that Grand Prix, I can tell you now that person is listed in temporary serious condition and is expected to survive. One thing they don't really get into in this video is when the two brothers, three brothers, or at least the two brothers, pulled up in the car. Well, one of them put the window down and they said something to that woman and her boyfriend, whomever he was. 
I don't know what they said. She didn't seem too happy about it. But maybe we will learn more in the fullness of time. Okay, the story is about to get even crazier on the next clip. But, you know, I want to remind you of one thing. We've done a couple of stories on Detroit. And remember, right, we don't do that many stories on Detroit because it's too easy. Too much black criminality, too much black violence, too much black mob violence. But even in Detroit, sometimes it's you look at it and go, wow, that's really weird. And we've done three or four stories. I've documented this in both of my books, White Girl Bleed a Lot, Don't Make the Black Kids Angry. We've done stories where groups of black people in Detroit will just move into a convenience store with a gas station and they just kind of start living there. They'll drink the coffee, spit on the floor. And, you know, when the owner comes in and says, what are you guys doing there? They go, no, this is this is our this is ours now because you're in like the 29th Street hood territory. And, uh, you know, the cops come, the guys walk <laughs> they don't run away. They walk away, wait, wait till the cops leave come back all on video and it's just a it's just a big lag anyway so that's why that's what these cameras and all these convenience stores and gas stations and mcdonald's are all about people are going to try to reclaim their little stores now let's get on okay so you remember we just saw the guy rush up to the car uh and and and, and knock the people away well he's kind of a hero in some people's eyes not in everybody's. We've shown you this terrifying video of a shooting at a Detroit gas station. Tonight, a new twist to the story. It turns out the targets of those bullets were brothers. One of them was wounded. The other brother saved his life. But tonight, that brave lifesaver is in jail. Fox 2's Darren Ash explains why. Darren. Right, Devon Todd. Considered a hero, especially when you see that video. He took down the gunwoman and then rushed his brother to the hospital. And even though Detroit police cleared him, we've learned he's also behind bars tonight. He can't be no prouder. You know, he, he saved his brother's life. David Todd Sr. praising his son Devon, especially after watching this surveillance video, which captured three of his sons at the mobile gas station on Finkel in Detroit. While Devon ran into the gas station to buy some cigarettes, you can see a man and woman approach the car with two of his brothers sitting inside. Devon tries to intervene. He came out the gas station, he stood by and listened to what was going on. He said, you know, what's wrong with this guy? And, you know, as he got aggressive, he just hit him. The guy fell out. That's when the woman reaches under her skirt, pulls out a gun, and fires it into the car, striking Devon's brother, David Jr., three times. Devon takes the woman down and then wrestles the gun out of her hand. Got the gun away from her. Um, she's, at the same time, she's yelling, get the other gun, get the other gun. He was stuck for a minute. He said, Daddy, I just reacted. He said, I thought he was going to kill David. David says his son grabbed the weapon and drove his brother straight to the hospital. Once his brother was stable, David says Devon drove to the Detroit Police Department and turned himself and the woman's weapon in. Detroit police investigated and tell Fox 2 they cleared Devon of any wrongdoing and let him go. But on Monday, Devon's parole officer had him hauled off to jail, claiming what happened was a violation of his parole. I don't understand that. He saved my one son. He's going, he's in, he's in jail on his way to prison for saving his brother's life. And I, 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 I can't digest that. David says when Devon was younger, he was convicted of armed robbery and served five years in prison. But at 24, he was working to turn his life around. He had a job and spent his free time with his family. David says his son does not deserve to be punished for doing the right thing. He did all that. Now, because he's approached by somebody silly, he got to sit and he got he, he to make, you know, go do how much time in jail for what? Now, looking for some answers, I put a call into Devon Todd's parole officer with the Michigan Department of Corrections. Still waiting to hear back tonight. You know, this crystal clear video, uh, the surveillance video, is part of DPD's new initiative. We've heard about Project Greenlight at these gas stations. And it's working hours after we revealed the female suspect's picture. She was identified and arrested.
Hugh, I'll back to you. Taryn, it still doesn't make sense. Devon risked his life to save his brother David. How is defending a life a violation of parole? Well, again, we're looking for answers from the parole officer, but according to Dad, it's because he left the scene of the crime. That's what his son was told. But, of course, he was trying to get his brother to the hospital. He was also in possession of the suspect's weapon. But Detroit police cleared him, so everybody tonight wants to know why didn't the parole officer. So we'll be certainly keeping tabs on this. Taryn, before we go, do these people know each other? Did Devon know this woman? No, no, they did not. And that was the whole thing. He he recognized that the um, the woman and the man were a bit belligerent and, and starting to mess with his brothers. And that's why he came out of that gas station and really kind of intervened. But no, I mean, it all happened so fast, they said. And he really just tried to defuse the situation as quickly as possible. And that video makes it very clear. All right, Taryn, thank you. You ever met any parole officers? I did. I was helping my buddy run his business at the end of the pier in Ocean Beach, California, in San Diego. So uh, we were looking for a chef, so we put an ad out. We, we ran this, we found this one guy. Seemed like he was really good. Seemed, you know, he made a really good plate of food, a nice attitude, the whole thing. So we hadn't said, yeah, we'll hire you yet, but he goes, yeah, I got to tell you one more thing. I just got out of prison. Well, I think he was in there for, I think they caught him with like a uh, moving van full of pot or something. So, you know, we didn't like that, but we said, oh, the hell with it. You know, we'll hire you anyway. And he says, well, my parole officer is going to come out here. You know that. I said, oh, we don't care. So the parole officer came out and I'm just telling you, this guy was 100% business, no nothing, no, hey, you want a cup of coffee? You want something? You want a hamburger? No, this guy was like, looking at us like we were potentially part of some his uh, the conspiracy to put this guy back into the marijuana smuggling business and i think that's kind of and i you know i don't and i never blamed them for being like that because i assume if you're a parole officer basically 99 percent of the stuff that you hear about what's going on in your parolee's life is probably not true so he came out regularly. It was always the same. No BS. Didn't want to hear it from us. Just wanted to make sure our guy was showing up, doing a good job, which he was. Uh, anyway, so I'm, I, I kind of get the same vibe off this parole officer, right? It's like, listen, you knew the rules. No guns, no this, no that. I don't want to hear anything else. Everything else is just a little story you concocted around these facts. You're gone. So my guess is, uh, I guess is that guy won't be, he won't be back in prison that much longer. And when he gets out, he'll be kind of a hero. So maybe that'll 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 make his time in, in the slammer worth it. Uh, anyway, when he gets out, I'm sure he'll have a little message to tell people in the gas stations of Detroit. Don't make the black kids angry.